This is a short whiteboard video on how to build your key stakeholder map. Now, recently we spoke about this in episode four of Grow Your Brand, where we were talking about how to tell your story so people really care about it. Now, hopefully you've had a listen to this and you're already familiar with the concept of who a stakeholder is. But basically, a stakeholder is someone who is affected by or who will affect your business and your brand. Now, we look at your stakeholders in relation to their level of interest and their level of influence. So interest are people who are going to be affected by you and influence people who are going to affect you. And of course, there's people who will have a bi-directional relationship with you. Now, depending on where people fall within this, these sort of four quadrants uh, will depend on what you do with them. So if they have high level of influence and also a high level of interest, then we want to manage them closely. Where if they have a high level of interest, we want to keep them informed. A lower level of interest and a lower level of influence, we just need some regular contact. And if they've got a high level of influence, but they have a low level of interest, then we need to anticipate and meet their needs. This video is specifically about stakeholder mapping in relation to growing your brand. So it's really important that when you think about how you're interacting with your stakeholders, you remember that your brand and your reputation is at stake. Now, there's two different types of stakeholders, broadly speaking. There's your internal stakeholders, people who serve the business and brand, people who are at the front line working with customers, your employees, your board of directors, and also external stakeholders, so members outside of the business who will affect or will be affected by your activities, like your customers. When it comes to actually drawing out your stakeholder map, before you just start plotting people randomly on the map, it's important to ask yourself a few questions. And I usually find it's really helpful to start by listing out the people or departments involved in the activities. Then we look at what are these people responsible for and what do they care about in relation to my business, my brand, my activities. When it comes to external stakeholders, we're probably going to be asking questions like, who in the community is interested in my business? Who in the community will influence my business? And are there thir any third parties who provide us with advice or funding? List as many people, organisations and other third parties you can think of before you start plotting down where they sit within these four quadrants on your key stakeholder map. So here's some examples of internal stakeholders. It might be your receptionist or a virtual assistant. If you have a larger organisation, it might be your marketing department and leaders within that, your sales director, your board of directors. With external key stakeholders, it might be people like your competitors, your consultants, so an accounting firm, and people who provide funding, like a bank or investors. Usually when we sort of categorise stakeholders, we're thinking internal stakeholders are employees, directors and owners and external stakeholders are customers, alliances, providers, people in the community, policy makers, government, collaborators, competitors. It's going to be different for each project, each brand, each business. So it's really important you think about who these people are in relation to what you're doing. When it comes to actually plotting out the graph, I find this is a really, really useful way to organize your information, actually organize this list. And I've talked through this in the worksheet that goes along with this video and along with the podcast episode as well. So basically, we want to rank people in terms of interest and influence. So we give people with the most interest a number one, with some interest a number two, and with the least interest number three. And then we do the same thing with influence, but we're going to use A, B and C this time. So A for most influence, B for some influence and C for little influence. And then basically you just plot these key stakeholders in relation to where they rank. So they'll end up with two scores. They'll end up with a number and they'll end up with a letter. Now, if they've got a one and an A, then that means they fall in the manage closely quadrant. If they've got a one B or a one C, that means we need to keep them informed. If they've got a two A or a three A, we need to anticipate and manage their needs. And if they've got a 2C, a 2B, a 3C or a 3B, then we need to keep in regular contact with them. Now, like I said, there's a worksheet that goes along with this video and the podcast. So if you head over to laurencrest.com forward slash grow your brand and you go to the show notes for episode four, you'll be able to access that. I'll put the links below 
And this will give you some more guidance on how to build that stakeholder map. If you haven't already, also have a listen to episode four of my podcast, Grow Your Brand, on telling your story so people care about it. And if you like this content, please let me know. Just give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also subscribe to my podcast.